Hey, what is up? What is going on? This is Gumby, and today we're going to break down the reveal stream on June 16th. Should be fun. Um, they revealed a lot of stuff that I am very, very interested and very curious about, and very excited for the future of Overwatch 2. Now, if you do like the content of this channel, please do like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me a lot, helps the channel grow. And without further ado, Let's dig in. First, how are you two he doing? looks like John Goodman, great. but Excited. really thin. Yes, right? So he, he really does, but anyway, and I'm so I digress. To have you both here. Now, uh, there was a ton of news which dropped over the weekend. And the yes, community has it was been a ton of news, buzzing. and we and were friggin' worried you now that you had nothing to reveal on the 16th. Watching at home. Now, the biggest announcement had to be the news that Overwatch 2 is releasing on October 4th as a free-to-play live service. That's incredible, and that must be very, very exciting for you and your team. Yeah, Overwatch 2, it's been a labor of love for our, our team. We're all dedicated to creating a game that our community will enjoy for years to come. We also want players to feel like there was always something new for them to play or experience It's live the service. These goals really led us down the path of developing Overwatch 2 as an always-on living game. Because it's One better to that monetize. to evolve and expand through seasonal content drops and keeps the game. And as I fresh love, and I love all of this. By the way, it's free to play PvP. Um, there's a new hero every season, and there's going to be nine weeks per season. So that means every nine weeks, there's going to be a new hero. And since there are 52 weeks, oops, 52 weeks in a year. I mean, do the math, it's going to be, well, it's going to be sub-7, it's going to be around 6, right? Around 6 heroes per year, right? <clears throat> Which is pretty good. It's fun to play long after it turns on. We're lucky to have such a passionate and creative set of players. And we know that they've been craving more ways to play the game they love so much. In recent yes. years, we haven't done a good enough job at delivering that. Yes, yes, you have not been doing a very good job, but then I can't really blame you that much because Overwatch 1 monetization... Oops. Monetization... Is bad. It's bad. It's really, really bad. Loot boxes are too generous. Like, no one, no one in their right mind would ever buy a loot box. And... Overwatch League skins, I mean, that's great, but once people got owl points for free for just watching the game, then it's like, it's easy. Plus, the moment that they gathered enough owl points and they already bought every single goddamn skin that they want from the team that they want, like, why would they, why would they pay more money? There's no point. There's for literally fans, no point. We feel their frustration. We took a hard look at our strategy for Overwatch 2 to make sure that we so, deliver Overwatch 2 was actually necessary. Maps, oh god. Wait, wait, wait. Show us, show sure us Nepal again. Could deliver new heroes. This is the, the Brazil map, but this one, this one is clearly a payload. This is where your payload starts, I think. Or at the very least, this might be hybrid, right? So, hi like, um, Nepal is now a hybrid. It's a hybrid map. This is where the start of your payload is, or where you capture the payload. Payload start. And this has to be Nepal, and then you have to push it all the way around. I don't know how you would push it though, because I can see a path over here, and there's another path over there. So maybe this is just a side alley. But either way, I'm excited for that. Maps, <coughs> modes, and more to the community on a frequent and consistent basis. As an Overwatch fan, of course, that's music to my ears. We know that's the community's top priority, and we feel like we have the right approach. Actually, the top to priority for the community for is skins well into the and maps. How are you but for two bro modes like me, on that promise. Uh, well, the very or first step is just getting this. the game into everyone's just hands. PvP. And that's going to happen on October 4th when we transition Overwatch 1 and invite every PC and console player to drop in and experience Overwatch 2's reimagined PvP experience. And that's just the beginning. 
Our plan is to deliver a steady drumbeat of new content every nine weeks through free seasonal updates, ensuring that there's always something new to play, chase, unlock in Overwatch 2. Well, I wonder how stressful amazing. that There's is so for much them, of it though. Too. And now, how viable that is. And every nine weeks they have something more new. Details? Of course, uh, I'd be happy to share a look at the road ahead. Our journey is going to begin on October 4th, when Overwatch 2 releases free to play. Three new heroes. This is going to be Sojourn, right? The very first one that we know now. Then, of course, Junker Queen. And then the third support hero, who is... Well, certainly, probably Japanese can summon a fox. We'll call her Fox Lady. And then we're gonna get six new maps, which it might mean... Okay, for the maps, it might mean, well, Nepal being a hybrid, right? I wonder if we have access to the old versions of the maps, or if they're completely gone, right? So, that's one. There's Portugal. And then the Brazil map, right? And then the rest of it is probably going to be that Toronto, Coliseo, and a sixth one that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. That's already Portugal. Yeah. I was thinking, wait, there's, isn't there supposed to be another push map? It's Portugal, I forgot. Brazil. Yeah, these are these are the two maps that we haven't... Well, three maps that we haven't played, but only been teased. I don't know what the sixth map is going to be. Because definitely, they're going to be counting the, the two new push maps. Uh, Toronto and Colosseo in this one. But I'm not sure what the sixth map is going to be. So this is push, obviously, and the 30 new skins, whatever. This includes three new heroes, <clears throat> six new maps, a brand new mode, and more. The new heroes include Sojourn, Ew. Junker Queen, and a brand new support hero that we'll reveal in the months ahead. Our new maps yeah, will take months players ahead. So that means that maybe by October we know what Fox Lady does. Also, this is Portugal, apparently. Iconic locations. I like it. It's the the colors are a bit muted, but I like it as a contrast to everything else we're in. Everything's either blue, yellow, blue and white, like um, a Toronto thing, yellow like Coliseo, and I I guess Ilios now is a little bit more a shade of yellow because of how the the daytime thing is, or, yeah, yeah. Our new PVP mode I like called it. Push will challenge teams More in neutral new color ways. in that one. Players will also be able to unlock new cosmetics. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is Rialto, isn't it? Because I recognize this balcony, right? This is Rialto. And from what I can tell, it seems like it's still... It's still, um, what do you call this? A payload map, right? Still a payload map. I wonder what they changed that much. Well, this thing looks a lot wider, right? This part of the map of Rialto looks wider than before. There's a lot more space to go in there. Because this is definitely not Coliseo. Granted that you can change the time of day, but I don't remember this bridge being Coliseo. Or this architecture right here, so that's interesting. Items through the in-game So that might be map number six. That's new. As well as complete weekly challenges. So for this one, oh wait, 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 wait! You have I have this. I have Overwatch Origins. So th does that mean that I automatically get this, even though I don't have a premium battle pass? Maybe. Maybe, because they did talk about Founder's Edition, right? Founder's Edition. Having some perks. So it might be a battle pass, a free battle pass for Season 1. It could also mean that we also have free things like this. And it could also mean that all of those are real. But yeah, but anyway, 
from this, it looks like somewhat similar to a Halo Infinite um, Battle Pass, which has me a little bit worried. But then again, I'm a person who has already had all of the skins that I want, kind of. Well, at least so far. So, eh, I, I don't really feel that way as as bad as an in infinite and then it's like, dude, you and have to grind the start of competitive play to grind so hard. And course, everyone and, will or also pay. be able to access the revamped heroes, PvP just to maps, get the, the stuff in the battle pass game modes from the first Overwatch game. Oh god, not not Junkenstein's revenge for the nth time. Dude, Lucio Ball for the nth time. Jesus fucking Christ, why? The next season will arrive in early December, where we will introduce December is the next new season. Wait, does that track October? So there's October. November. Yeah, that is. Because this is four weeks, right? Four weeks. This is another four weeks. And yeah, December is going to be... It's a new tank hero, along with that. So I'm curious as to what this tank hero is going to be. This is Mauga from the, um, the lore of Batiste, right? It could be. But I would rather have another support. Honestly, because right now we have a lot of tanks. We have lots of tanks. We have lots of DPS, DPS, and but we don't have. We have seven supports, right? And while the variety of gameplay for those supports is really varied. Right, because Brig is someone that needs to smack you to heal. Um, Lucio wall rides and whatnot. Uh, Mercy can damage boost and fly away. Moira has an AOE heal, probably one of the highest healing outputs in the game. Uh, Bap has immortality field and burst heal in an AOE. And then we have Ana who has a CC, one of the few few heroes that still has a CC in this game. So, yeah. Don't know why they chose a tank, but all right. Okay, I I I kind of trust them. With a new map. There's going we'll to be a new battle pass on. by the time that December six happens. Interesting. Tank items for players to earn. So you earn have them. about all new two pass months also in -game to store. grind. In 2023, we'll continue to release a new season every nine weeks with either a new. And this also implies that. Since they say that PVE begins, this is this is basically full release, right? This is full release. This is no longer going to be oops, release. I can't spell. This is going to be the time when Overwatch 2 is completely out. Because this is the only this is the remaining puzzle piece for Overwatch 2. Because that's yeah. Like Overwatch 2 is 5v5. Plus PV, PVE campaign, like a a massive PVE campaign. So, yeah, this is the point where in twenty 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 three is going to be the point where in Overwatch two will be complete. Not necessarily like they stop making stuff for it, but rather that it is a full release game. Hero, new map or new mode. Not that I care about more most content, of these other than the new maps and the new challenges, hero. Access new battle passes. So for 2022, we're going to get a total of four heroes, which is not bad, because I, I would rather have three to four heroes per, per year, even. Per year? I think six is a little bit much than six every three months or something. Because this is easier to balance. This is easier to balance for the game. Right? Six, I don't know why people want six heroes at once on release. It doesn't make sense to me. Or six new heroes, yeah? Like, dude. And it's more. gonna be another Brig, Orissa, Sigma... 
situation we're also wherein our new PvE they didn't really balance it that really well. Excited about. We're really looking forward to being able to share more with the community as we get closer to releasing them. I know we've seen more and more games shift towards that free-to-play model in recent years, and it really does seem like players have taken a liking to it, especially shooter fans. Um, did that have an impact on deciding to make Overwatch 2 uh, go free-to-play? Honestly, not really. For us... For He's not lying. It's not really that the th that FTP model that makes it... It's not this. It's not this. It's the loot box. The loot box was ridiculously generous. This is so bad. <laughs> this was incredibly bad for everything. So I kind of believe Aaron whenever he says it's not really... What drove them to make it free-to-play is not that. Free-to-play games offer a lot of advantages. From the very start, Overwatch was designed to be a social experience. We have heroes of different roles, and they all rely on each other in, in order to accomplish their objectives in the game, so it requires a lot of teamwork. We also see that outside of our game, within our community, with fan art, cosplay, and the Overwatch League. It is actually mostly for the Overwatch League. Why? Because a lot of esports esports games nowadays are free to play. Almost each and every single esport game is free to play. Even StarCraft 2 is free to play. Hearthstone is, well, despite how small the esports community for that is free to play. Valorant, League of Legends, I I'm not sure about R6, but then again, R6, I don't you know really pay attention to it. The most fun yeah. When they're playing with their friends or meeting new ones, and the move to free to play makes it easy for everyone to just drop in, play the game, join the community, whether they own Overwatch 1 or not. And with Overwatch 2 crossplay enabled, people can play together no matter what platform they prefer to play on. For as long as you control the aim assist, I am okay with this. It's always been a game that stood for inclusivity and community. When they see the roster of heroes, we want them to feel like there's someone there that they can feel connected to. Because... Okay, so her icon isn't really that big. Junker Queen's icon is not that big. So, you know, my initial assessment was like, oh, it's really out of place. Although, I, I don't really like her icon <laughs> that much. Also, these are very old icons. For the, I think this was a very early build of Overwatch 2 as well. Yeah. This is a very old icon. Yep. Okay. We're really excited because people will just be able to just fully immerse yourself God damn, in the that apps diva. The story. Really that diva. Because people will just be able to. Oh, baby. Just fully immerse mm, That redesign. And this, especially this, the gremlin inside. <laughs> God damn. And the maps and the storylines and the heroes. I'm actually going well, to be seasonal model, good at we'll D.Va this time. A ton of content in very frequently as we're Just updating because. games of these big seasonal drops. We're looking at releasing heroes every other season and then a map in between. Oh, baby. These big seasonal if there was drops. any doubt. We're looking at releasing heroes every other season. If there was any doubt that this was Nepal. Yeah, that, that. That script right there, that, that, well, font language right there, that's definitely and then a map in between from that region. And on top of that, we're looking at dropping a ton of content involving skins and other great goodies for players to get their hands on for each seasonal drop. Okay, we get we police, so much that we police uh, do Tracer and Yata Garasu Mercy. For us. We think there is I guess. so much more we can bring. I'm really happy moving to our new seasonal based schedule, making this really huge commitment to regular updates it's exciting at the same time because i know what this team can do we really want players to be able to anticipate when things are going to enter the game With yeah, because the by saying that every nine coming, weeks you have a new hero a new map sure everybody knows what's it's pretty coming. predictable and along with the free-to-play change we're doing away with loot boxes entirely we have a new yes, battle pass thank you. coming in and we have store as well so the players will have a lot more control about how they interact with the game and how they in the end i think they them. just make more money from that we've been working on so many things over the past couple years i'm most excited for folks to see some of the new heroes that we've been kind of cooking up it's a bunch of different reasons why we choose to make a hero we're trying to follow the narrative pick the hero that makes sense or do we need to create a hero that answers this mana counters a certain strategy that please no no more brig this is basically what happened when they created brig 1.0
good god. No one played dive anymore, everybody became GOAT's team. And that was so, so bad. It became a MOBA instead of an FPS. That's too strong in a game. We've got two more supports. So hopefully they don't forget about FPS. The, first couple of the fact that and this is an FPS game. We're still working on new characters for a year, year and a half down the line as well. There's characters that folks have already seen glimpses of in the story. And there's also characters that you've never seen before, never heard about. We were looking at... This is the thing that I the don't get, though. you've never seen before, never heard about. Okay, so Tracer was in... In what do you call this? In King's Row. And then Zen was in Nepal. And the last time that we saw Soldier 76, he was in Dorado. So why is he in Monaco now? Why is 76 featured in this one? That is the question. But it's a minor thing, it doesn't really change any gameplay thing. Fast paced paradigm at least not for PvP. And crowd control. You can see a lot of that reflected in team play moments, but with a much faster pace vibe. We want to push the sci-fi, the futuristic feeling of maps. There's a touch of sci-fi everywhere you look. So this is something that was a little bit more subtle in Overwatch 1. This is where I disagree, dude. There's literally a robot, there's a ball that we can control. There's a hamster just piloting a ginormous ball, rolls around the map, there are floating cars. Yeah, everything in Overwatch 1 was sci-fi. It wasn't very subtle. We <laughs> so, really want players to I don't... feel that the world takes place in not-so-distant future. Coming up next is Rio. But whatever. Rio. Uh, new... Dude, this is so colorful. This is such a break from every other map that we've played so far in Overwatch 2 beta. Look at the colors. Ugh. Oh, look at it. And it's very um it's a very good reference to the real place, right? Because the, the houses there are incredibly colorful. They're they're stacked up next to each other and sometimes on top of each other. Yeah. The PvP map. Pretty sure everybody's gonna love that one as well. It's a great map. It's close to the and it's really and people bright. on the team are from Brazil, so it was kind of fun to inject the culture, the colors. Hopefully, it's not too bright. Map. There's a map that takes place in Portugal. This map is pretty. And this is another one that I like because the the colors are a little bit muted, but it's not dark. It's not nighttime, right? Also, yeah, definitely, this is either a push or a payload map. Pretty close. To they, the I think they said it's push. So this is the spawn room for one team. I think it's, yeah. I think this helps identify right here, apart from this, apart from the obvious thing, but the color of this castle thingy, the wall, it's blue. And then I'm, I'm guessing the opposing team's castle is going to be red. I'm an artist. He's from Portugal. People from the location should really get a sense that we've done a ton of research. And we were very inspired, and I think we captured it pretty beautifully in the game. It is a push map, one of the newest. Yeah, it is modes, a push map. We tried some pretty interesting layout. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I think I get what he means by we tried some interesting layouts because look at this. It actually bends like that. So maybe that's what he means by we made an interesting layout. Your middle, the middle point of the map where the, um, the barrier starts is actually uh, roundabout. Which means that you have to turn all the way around just to get this barrier. But the thing that I'm most curious about is how they will fix the snowball, right? Because... Um, and there is a post about this. I, I first heard it from the guy who posted it, but he made stat sheets for uh, for push maps, wherein it was found that the moment that you capture the very first checkpoint, your your chances of winning are like seventy percent. It increases by 70%. And the opposing team just has a 30% chance of winning. Just by capturing the first checkpoint. So it's very 
Yeah, it's very snowball this one, so we hope the players like it. We definitely want the game to feel like a globe-trotting adventure. I mean, it always it has felt like that. Used to in Overwatch one. We have charms, we have... Okay, we got charms that... Oh, that's adorable. What the hell is that? I, I love how they have <laughs> sample pictures just to get inspiration for it. Also, who the hell is Toki? Hmm. Anyway. I have banners. The we banners, I'm curious. In the works, I, I guess that's a charms. banner, right? We have wait, wait, wait. banners. Yeah. And for some reason, Hammond is just holding up a, a shaker of salt slash pepper. I... What? The current Mikva skin that sure. works that I worked on actually is for Genji. He's got this kind of cyberpunk Japanese demonic theme. Mythic skins are meant to be this next tier of skins above legendary. We want players to be able to go in there and pick and choose certain pieces meant to be. There. You can pick and choose certain pieces of the mythic skin, so you can mix and match. Mythics. Hmm. I wonder how how that will affect uh, how visible you are on the map. Probably not a lot, because the way that the devs made it, even in the Overwatch Two beta, the very first one, yeah. No, no matter what skin you you choose, I can see you. I can see you very clearly. This extra awesome legendary skin that you can. Yeah, I guess this is, a, this is an exciting thing for people who care about skins. Released over the seasons. All this amazing stuff, all of the amazing skins. For weapon charms, really what we're looking for there is just for the players to be able to express themselves and dress their character up. One of our core tenants... On yeah, I love expressing myself through the power of donuts. Though I wonder... Dude, Symmetra's gun looks amazing now. What the fuck? See it and enjoy it while you're playing the game. Once I wonder if... Really okay, I wonder if they'll make it so that the charm will change how projectiles look. That might be a little bit too much, but I mean, I might be interested in them if they do that. See it and enjoy it while you're playing the game. One thing that was really important to us was to make sure that players, if they earn anything in the game anywhere, that they're able to use it everywhere. So, so if cross you progression earn on a console or a PC or an Overwatch One, you can always use it in anywhere in Overwatch Two as well. And with yeah, that's a complaint that there'll be a ton people of new had content too. And new battle pass as well. These seasonal updates will allow us to be God, constantly new Nepal looks with so new content, good. New heroes, new maps. I want to play Nepal, so the man. It's going to feel fresh just all the time. There's always going to be Nepal is one of my favorite maps. There's never going to be a point where you're like, gosh, I don't Apart from King's Row. Being able to provide players with new heroes every so often, new maps. It is going to be a growing and evolving game. There's so much for us to explore as we move forward. Get ready. It's going to be really exciting, really here's fun. The, here's another question that I have. So they're doing all of these brandishing things, Get right? Ready. I I wonder what button you have to press now for this. Because obviously WSAD are already occupied. F is TP. F or E is what people use for TPing. So, I mean, I guess there's a lot more keyboard, but then again, this is not tactically important, so who cares if it's like a button, it's a key that's really, really far away from WS, ASMD. It's so. going to be really exciting, really fun. With both PvP and PvE, there's going to be Just really thoughts. great content for you to immerse yourself in and for maximizing play over and over again with your friends. All sorts of things. We can't wait for October 4th. We're just excited to be back. Waiting you for with that PvE is coming in cautious optimism now, can you tell for, for Overwatch to be back. And why the team is committed to bringing these type of experiences into Overwatch. We're all so invested in the world of Overwatch and, and the heroes that live in it. And through the years, we've developed cinematics, animated shorts, and graphic novels for our players who just want to get deeper into the lore. With PvE, of which I do not care for. <laughs> to go deeper into diverse storytelling in ways that we really just haven't been able to before. So we are planning to expand the Overwatch universe through these seasons that we just described, and we will start delivering this PVE gameplay in 2023. PVE will be delivered through the live service. 
and that means we'll be able to deliver and it's tell so weird more. that they're going for these weird cuts i mean i'm not saying that zoe does not look good it's just that it's a weird direction that they have that they will immediately cut to someone who's not talking and then cut back to the person who's talking then cut back to the person who's not talking and just yeah it's kind of weird but Overwatch whatever it's their show more opportunities to experience our heroes here's a sneak peek at what we're working on the team's goal for a little bit of PV is to basically move the overall story of Overwatch 4. We've told a lot of short stories along the way. There are a lot of to be continues. It's time for us to. Okay. I wonder if you will actually fight the giant mech in the cinematic. Or if this is just another dude that shows up. Also, you can see some fascinating skins. Who the hell? Is that Tracer or someone? Who is this? What? Who's this? Is that Brig? It. I mean, the, the letters... Okay, so the very last letter is E. The next one is 2T. So I think it's Brig, but her icon is weird. Answer those questions. But I kind of like it. I kind of like that look. Stories, ask new questions. I kind of like the look. So the new game will definitely move the overall canon of the lore of Overwatch forward. Get those doors open! For the PvP live The service. hell? There's a floating you know, brain? The lore of Overwatch forward. Get those yeah. All oh, that shit. Well, it's not really a brain. It looks like a brain. Doors open! For the PvP live service, for certain seasons, you're also going to get some PvE maps. Okay, and PC no Tracer. And at least some of the maps. They've come back, and they're mad, so it's Overwatch's job to take them out. There's going to be content for you. Here's the thing that I hope for, though. Even though I'm probably not going to be playing that much PvE, that we have more than just robots versus... Overwatch. I, I hope there's going to be other variations, not just robots. Like, give me give me people to shoot. As weird and probably offensive as that may sound. Because, I, like, dude, to me, this is such a cop-out to remaining within a certain rating, age rating. I don't mind them going a little bit more mature, but I can also kind of understand why they're going for a lower rating, right? So that they can sell it you more. Immerse yourself in and so it's whatever, to play but over and over yeah. Again. Personally, I'd rather just not just keep team. blasting they're more and more robots. They need help with I think it's the an overdone Brigitte theme. Lucio. So we're going to tell the story of how Overwatch basically gets back together. Another thing we want to do with uh, the story is to showcase more of where the characters are from. For example, Torbjorn is from Gothenburg. Players will get a chance to see what Torbjorn's factory looks like. You can play PvE with your friends and immerse yourself in the world and stay inside of it a little bit longer. I mean, the future's gonna be bright. Bobby we'll Kotick's in gonna be all kicked new out. PvP experience it's great. transforming from a 6v6 to a 5v5 changed a lot of how we design heroes and actually how we balance them as well. We had to go back and look at all the heroes and all the tanks especially and make sure that everyone fits and works really well in this new paradigm. This newfound importance on each individual player to feel like they can really make an impact on the game. We're trying to obviously maintain the original character's identity and overall silhouette, colors, statements, but also yes. kind of bring something a little bit new. This that's the thing that makes people like meme on the redesigns, by the way. It's like everyone's like, oh, it's just it's just the, the exact same dude. What the fuck? Why why are they calling it a redesign? Blah blah blah. That's the point. Kind of. They're they're making slight adjustments. They're making uh different like slight cosmetic changes. But overall silhouette is going to be the same. Why is that important? Because people need to recognize that, yes, that's a Bastion that's trying to flank you. Right? We can make balance adjustments. Or that's a Reaper. Really quick. Or that's, that's a Bastion, that's a Reinhardt. Don't confuse it for anything else. Issues. Don't confuse it for Jeff any Goodman other tank. The rest of the hero design team have been loving all the feedback coming in. They have tons of awesome ideas about uh, how to change or uh, adjust balance. So heroes like Arissa got a, a major rework. We're looking at how many barriers are in place. You think about Overwatch, you think of these really protective shields. But we're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, what if she didn't have that? What would that even look like? We're just always looking uh, at... It would look fantastic, because finally, 
we don't have to shoot the goddamn shields anymore. Which is incredibly boring, even though I instruct my players on the regular. Double shield is probably one of the better comps in Overwatch 1. <laughs> At least until you get to a certain level. And people start playing around your team. But Lord, anyway, I digress. Change for the better. I'm really excited about how we've refreshed uh, all the maps. I think we've done a lot of great changes, especially for PvP. A lot of our old stuff just looks gorgeous now. We've done a lot with the Apart art from looking lighting. gorgeous, well, this is gorgeous by itself, but yeah, the things that they did with the maps are just incredible. It's a lot more open, it's, it's a lot more centric for 5v5 play, wherein any character can make a play, right, from the flags, from main, from anywhere, and actually have an impact. And just made stuff pop a little bit more. We also added some options with like daytime, nighttime. So here's the question, right? Which one will have more FPS? Is it going to be the daytime versus nighttime, right? That's the more important question here. I don't care what it looks like. Because the advantage probably of nighttime is that you have higher FPS. I would guess that it would have higher FPS. Because you're not... You're not forcing the system to apply some sort of lighting. But then again, I have a very poor understanding of how all this works. Right? And this is probably easier on the eyes. Because everyone likes dark mode, including me. Right? <laughs> Whereas daytime, it's probably super bright. You have to adjust the, the contrast, the gamma, and the whatever. So you, you won't see any scrims happening in daytime. It's always going to be nighttime. I think all of the Overwatch I think maps that's my are custom prediction. recorded in the actual place. We've hired a field recordist to actually go. You know what? Props to these gentlemen. Like, dude, they, there's a raging pandemic. And they have to do this. Or at least I think during this time, no one really knew of the pandemic yet. No one's really panicking yet. So they're still doing this. And any, old, any of them could have gotten the real world location. The virus. You realize it's a subtle detail, so but props to them. Those are the things that having really make to go out there. Come to life. We have done a pass playing all the old maps in 5v5 and adjusting things for that kind of setup, whether it's moving cover around just a little bit or tweaking a door. In the base. I'm curious as to how they will fix or change maps such as Hollywood. Hollywood, first point, fairly enclosed. There's not really a lot of... Um, well, there are a lot of flanks, but they're not very useful unless you have a team with you. Another one, well, we already saw Nepal. Nepal is a lot more open. It's a completely different map. But another one that I'm curious for is... Not King's Row. Shit, I forget the name of that map. I'll come. It'll come back to me eventually. But one of the things I'm curious about is curious about is Hollywood. We've been working on these for a little while now, and we're really oh yeah, Rialto. I wonder how they'll what they'll do with Rialto first point. Important milestone for us to get it in players' hands. Competitive 2.0. Competitive play is a different thing to a lot of different people. No, it's just one thing. It's one tank. Two DPS, two supports, and then you kill the enemy team, and then you numbers go up. That's it. <laughs> and we really didn't think we were providing only enough one. tools and measures to actually help players out if they did want to improve. We're reworking our scoreboard to provide more information uh, to players as they're like, playing through the match. This is so helpful for coaches and for the players alike, because you have useful stats. You have actual useful stats instead of medals, right? Uh, medals. Medals tell us nothing at all. And the, the great thing about this is that medals encourage people to be toxic, but for the wrong reasons. Potentially wrong reasons, right? 
at the very least, useful stats. The one that we saw in the Overwatch 2 beta, the very first one. I mean, people are still going to be toxic, but they're going to be toxic for the right reasons. They're going to be accurate for why they're being toxic. Right? They will flame people who suck so that they will get good. And the people who are not really bad will at least get some praise or be left alone. At least that's in theory. Well, There's just some the match, absolute trash people out there who will flame report. you no matter what. So you can look at, the at, what, at that point, you just block them. So whatever. You actually go into... Ooh, wait, 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 wait. Hanamura is back, but it is now a payload. It is now a payload. Also, we have highlights, we have replays, so that's something that I'm looking forward to as a coach. Busan is now a hybrid. And I think I think I like this UI a little bit more than the original because you can see everything. You can see the things that you've switched to. You can see if it's unranked or competitive very, very easily. It's very clear if it's a defeat or a victory. There's a timestamp. Yeah, I like this. Uh, I actually like this. Section and look, we want to work towards providing you with information that will help you improve your game. We've been getting feedback from a lot of different areas from our you know, community team, like streamers, influencers. We've also been getting a lot of feedback from Overwatch League players. We do want to actually provide a bit of like feeling of progression. So one of the other changes we're making alongside that is hey, that not sucked. making your skill rating quite so granular. Right now, it's a very hard number. Yeah, so your skill rating right now is like 40, 4,500, 69, or well, not 69, but 420, 6, something like that. It's a numer a numeric skill rating. Yeah, it's a numeric skill rating. Skill tiers within the larger ones. If you see someone at a really high skill tier, you know that that person is not just that good of an Overwatch player, but they've earned it. So basically what they're saying is that if you're bronze, or I refuse to call it bronze, if you're wood, it's going to be wood one, right? There's going to be wood two. It's going to be wood three. And then however high it is before you get to silver. Then silver one, two, three. So my question here is um will it will it be more individual or still rely on the fact that your team lost, therefore you don't get any points, therefore you don't progress? Right? It's team. Because if if your team loses, does that mean that you derank or you did you get nothing? Or if you win as an individual or you get some certain stats to, as an individual, despite your team losing, you still gain points towards like going up another uh, rank or tier. So that's my, that's my question about how the ranking system will work in the Overwatch 2. One of the cool things about Overwatch 2 is it has this new push game mode and maps along with it pushes a PvP game mode on several different new maps. We've been playing it in the beta, and we've actually been using it in Overwatch League as well. And once we started playtesting it, it was kind of an instant hit. Yes, because it's There's actually very level, frenetic. It has one path that goes all the way through it from one base to the other. There's so many flanks. And in the middle is TS1. And I don't know how Zens will play on this map, but... <laughs> and the player is essentially fighting for control, and if they take control by the, taking... The answer to that is team, probably not TS1 play Zen. A barricade towards the enemy base. To win, you either get that barricade all the way to the enemy base, or after a certain amount of time, did you move your barricade farther than the enemy team did? So I will say that, at least initially, without really just looking at the UI and looking at the progress of the, the push, it's very hard to distinguish when it's going to be a victory or a defeat for you. So I got debated several times when the the, the victory slash defeat screen just popped up where everything slows down, right? And then I wonder, did did we see nine? Did we just lose or did we did we win? Good. So fair, fair game mode. 
I mean, that was initially after after seeing that this, and then just remembering that that's the goal of the the game mode. It was kind of easy. We developed a lot of engine upgrades in the game, so this allows us to do faster iteration. This was a huge effort by our engine team to allow the art team to build faster, more detailed environments. So that's probably how they're going to be able to do to nine weeks the game world. per season we with a new map. Immersive. New hero. Overwatch 2 is a dream for audio features. It's everything we've ever really wanted to do. We Here's the thing that I did find about the audio of Overwatch 2 beta. It was shit. It was actually shit compared to Overwatch 1. Overwatch 1, I could identify footsteps from several meters away. Right? It was a lot more clear. Overwatch 2, it felt really muddled. And... Yeah, like... Uh, several heroes can like just walk up to me and I wouldn't hear them from the flank. I hope they fix it. I really do. We really go into because that, they're going the way of fine, Halo fine, Infinite. Uh, a way that every sound <laughs> the, will the battle pass was already like a red flag. They're going the way of Halo Infinite if they don't fix the sound. Halo Infinite has insanely bad sound design. Like way worse than anything any FPS that I've ever played ever. You can hear your own gun, you can't hear the enemy's gun, and you can't hear their goddamn footstep. <laughs> Completely useless information if I can hear my own footstep. Through When we started on Overwatch 1, we were really, really focused on the headphone mix. We, yes, we because that's the know, only important bit. The game. You don't we have to do anything else, bro. Overwatch in all types of different places, so now we support yeah. home theater, Dolby. It's like, dude. People who play this on a goddamn speaker are degenerates. They're casuals. They don't deserve this. They deserve just the very basic stuff. You don't have to make it for them. It's yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Bleh. It's in the game. Now consoles offer all kinds of new things too, like 3D audio that we're supporting. There's new voice lines, new conversations between all of the favorite heroes. And we have so many, there'll be more that'll just come to the game over time. We've written... Listen, for as long as the voice lines will be in the exact same tone of frustration detected, right, from Hammond, I am okay. I am very okay. Because imagine meleeing someone and every time that you melee them, they say frustration detected. Oh my god. That's going to tilt them and that's going to be an easy, easy win. Because that man's going to be flaming his team and me. And not focusing on the game. So anyway, I think this one is about to end. So this has been a pleasure to watch. But I'm going to go ahead and head out. Please do like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you later for some uh, neon white.